And three, two, one, action. <laughs> Hello there guys, my name is Dennis, straight from Stun Camera Crew. Guess what? Xiaomi has challenged us to break the boundaries of time. So we decided to create three videos in three days. And we did it all by using this phone, the Redmi Note 10 Pro. Let's take a deep dive over to these parkour locations that you're probably not so familiar with. So I'm gonna press play here and let's see how we did it. The first day, ladies and gentlemen, we were at the green screen studio.
and I'll show you again. Crowd surf on water, throw up, throw the water, stir the crowd. Hello there guys, my name is Dennis, straight from Stun Camera Crew. Guess what? Xiaomi has challenged us to break the boundaries of time. So we decided to create three videos in three days. And we did it all by using this phone, the Redmi Note 10 Pro. Let's take a deep dive over to these parkour locations that you're probably not so familiar with. So I'm gonna press play here and let's see how we did it. The first day, ladies and gentlemen, we were at the green screen studio. Here we tested the power of this phone in a green screen environment. And you can actually do one of these green screen scenarios yourself. What you need is basically some green fabric, some lights to keep it even lit. You don't want that spill overcasting your subject, so you're gonna have problems in post. We've all been there, we don't like it, so let's not do it. Capture this in the highest quality possible you can. In our case, this was 4K, 30 frames per second. So we got the option to slow it down to 80%. And we chose to shoot with a high shutter speed to get less motion blur when shooting the talented tricker, Nico Dilfau. We had our artist create a 3D world environment that's based in the future. A grand hall entrance to Xiaomi headquarters. Now this space is huge, but it's made small by Nico's captivating movement. That's a wrap. Hope you find that useful. Let's move on. Day two, ladies and gentlemen. Here we're gonna take you guys over to the street. All right, some people are curious about how we shoot our videos in a one take sequence. Therefore, we got Oliver Thorpe, who is a parkour athlete who lives in Copenhagen, who basically has teamed up with us to demonstrate how to do this. All right, let's get on to it. Find a location as the first thing you do, then plan the run for your athlete, jumper or stunt related sport comrade. This will take you further in your thought process of how you want your cinematography line to look like. You can't really expect to get it the first time, even the athlete has to warm up in preparation for the final sequence. So take this as an opportunity to warm yourself up and prepare yourself for the shot that you want to create. Amazingly, Xiaomi has created this feature on the phone that's called a track moving object, which basically means that you can track your subject more effectively. This feature will enable you to get your shot in less time. Ladies and gentlemen, let's not stop here. Let me demonstrate what this phone can do in a more broader seamless sequence with more than just one athlete, the third and final shoot day at Jesse Peverell's gym. Let's get on to it. Hey, I'm Jesse Peverell. Welcome to Parkour Expo. 
Have you ever wondered what a parkour gym looks like after hours? Our team is hard at work changing this parkour gym into something otherworldly. We designed a film set that enables us to push the phone further so we can see how it performs in low light. Camera's rolling. And action. Now, there's a lot of movement taking place to this shoot, as we're all exploring almost every inch of the space. It's good to become familiar with movement yourself, actually. With over 20 years experience of parkour ourselves, this has enabled us to develop like a sixth sense of a kind that we can bring to the action we film. Learning movement helps you better predict the direction of where the athlete is planning to go through. It's important here that the camera operator leads the audience in a sort of dance that you have choreographed. By doing so, it keeps the audience hooked in some constant suspense as they are being taken on a journey through the story that you are telling. Three videos in three days, breaking the boundaries of time, accomplished. We just want to give a big shout out to Xiaomi for giving us this opportunity to engage with our audience in this way. For everyone watching at home, we would love to see what you have applied to these techniques in your own creative way. Use the hashtags in the caption below to keep us, SEC and Xiaomi informed. We would love to see what you guys can create out there. So, trip, but don't fall, stay safe. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Stan Camera Crew signing out and thank you for stepping by. We can all relate to the moments that fly by. The repetitive routine that makes each day blend into one. Let's not forget though, there is in every day new terrain to discover. Places we live that we've never seen before. It's the pursuit of these things that makes time stop. Break from the boundaries you yourself construct. There's always greater things to discover around each corner or in my case, from this rooftop. I'm Oliver Thorpe, and Copenhagen is my place of timelessness. Hey, I'm Jesse Pebble. Welcome to Parkour Expo. Have you ever wondered what a parkour gym looks like after hours? Come on, let's check it out.
Hello and welcome to the Redmi Note 10 5G and Redmi Note 10S launch. I'm Tom. And I'm David. The Redmi Note series is one of the most important series we've had in our smartphone portfolio. And the previous generation, Redmi Note 9, sold more than 37 million units globally. And in total, we sold more than 200 million units of Redmi Note devices. So it's really important that we continued that legacy and got it right with the Redmi Note 10 series. Our engineers really pushed the limits of what was possible, cramming as much innovation as they could whilst retaining that accessible price point that people have come to know and expect from a Redmi Note series. Making it a phone that goes way beyond your expectations. That's why our Redmi Note 10 series is all about challenging your boundaries. It stands for and celebrates those who really push the limits. So the first phone we want to talk about today is the Redmi Note 10 5G. Um, so you'll be probably very familiar with the design. Uh, it keeps a very consistent theme with the other Redmi Note 10 devices uh, you've seen before. Very comfortable to hold and to pick up. Uh, it's super light, 190 grams, so we've done a lot to reduce the weight. Um, and the bezels and the, um, the edges, nice and smooth and rounded. It comes in four different colors. So nighttime blue, aurora green, graphite gray, and chrome silver. And you can see here the effect. It's like a twilight design. You get two different layers and it gives that spacey, premium look and feel to it. Nice shimmer to it. And when you pick it up as well and you turn it on, um, you'll notice that there's a, a fingerprint scanner on the side for your thumb to naturally rest onto. And when that screen pops on, uh, you'll notice you've got a nice, bright 6.5 inch flat screen, uh, full HD plus, so a beautiful screen. It's not just full HD, but it comes in 90 Hertz. So it's more responsive. When you scroll up and down, you will definitely see the difference. And it makes a difference compared to other phones in this price range. Absolutely. And that 90 Hertz refresh rate is adaptive. What we mean by that is that it can uh, lower the refresh rate to 30 Hertz when you don't need the full 90 Hertz to help preserve some of that battery, but then pump it up back to 90 Hertz uh, when you really want to take advantage of those smooth scrolling speeds. Yeah, so that's perfect both for gaming performance as well as battery performance. All right, let's talk about performance. The Redmi Note 10 5G comes with a Dimensity 700 5G chipset. And what does that really mean? That probably won't mean a lot to a lot of people, but first and foremost, it means that you get 5G. So you can take advantage of the blazing fast download speeds and the streaming speeds. And if you don't yet have access to 5G, in the next 12 months, maybe 24 months, you may well do because the, the rollout of 5G is expanding in the UK. So you want to be able to take advantage of those speeds. Not just 5G, we also have a seven nanometer transistor size. And that means that it's faster, more energy efficient and more powerful. So any game that you play will just go smoothly. Versus the previous generation, which was 10 nanometers, this new chipset will give you 20% high performance a 30% improved energy efficiency and a 40% power efficiency. So we got both power and 5G in one package. The improved power efficiency of the chipset combined with a 5,000 milliamp battery means that this phone just keeps on going. And depending on the usage of the phone, you can keep on going for around two full days of usage. And when you do need to charge, you have the benefit of an 18 watt fast charging, so you don't have to be tethered to a charging point for long. And let's not forget the camera, one of the most important features on any smartphone. And the Redmi Note 10 5G doesn't let you down. It comes with a triple camera array. So you've got a 48 megapixel main camera for taking those pictures as well as recording in crisp quality. You've then got a two megapixel macro camera. So that's when you wanna take those up and close intricate shots. And then finally, you've also got a two megapixel depth sensor for when you wanna use things like live focus. We can always talk about hardware and so forth, but one of the best things with this phone is actually the software. It has a four in one pixel binning. And what does that mean? Well, it means that it combines four pixels together so you get four times as much light per pixel. That means less noise and also better nighttime shots. I love one of the features that we get from our flagships that is called AI Array. So you can take a picture and then you have a little bit of a detail that you need to touch up so you can move your finger on that with AI Erase, it will automatically fill the background there and remove that item that you do not want to stick out. And also not forgetting the uh, front-facing selfie camera. Uh, so we've got you covered there as well. We've got an eight megapixel camera. So when you're taking pictures of yourself or perhaps having a video call, you'll ensure that the quality um, is very high. 
So some of you may be wondering why we're surrounded by racing car memorabilia. Well, as we previously said, the Redmi Note series is all about challenging your boundaries. And perhaps there's no one better suited to talk about that than racing car driver, Billy Munger. So let's take a look. Hi, my name is Billy Munger. I am a double amputee and a professional racing driver. This is my kind of man cave. So we've got the simulator, which I do a lot of driving on. That's kind of where I do my training away from the circuit. In general, this is just basically like a big gym in here. And then upstairs, a couple of sofas, a little mini fridge <laughs> and uh, a TV. I live here with my mum, dad and my sister. I started racing in go-karting when I was seven, so pretty much every weekend was spent at a racetrack, so I made lots of friends that I would compete against in racing. And my best mate, Jamie, lives about 10 minutes down the road, so we're always uh, up to no good together. Winning is great, but also the ability to connect with people and to get the best out of other people is also quite a nice thing to be able to do. My introduction to racing when I was younger was it came from my dad. So actually when I was two years old, so when I was really a baby, that was when my dad brought me my first go-kart. So I obviously had no idea. He, I remember him telling me the story of he went and met the guy, picked the go-kart up and he said, oh, where's your son or daughter who's gonna be driving it? And he said, oh, he's in the front seat. And uh, the guy kind of walked past the window, looked in and then double, little double take, like, he can't drive this. You have to be seven to drive this go-kart. And so as soon as I was ready to get into one, he wanted me to, to have a go because it was just such, he was so passionate about motorsport and uh, I caught the bug. We'd go to a local track, my dad would pay five, 10 pound for like a half an hour slot on the weekend. He would basically run around the track and I would just drive this go-kart along behind him. And I mean, he was not, no Mo Farah, so <laughs> the fact he could run around in front of me kind of says it all. Just kind of went from there and it was so relaxed. There was zero pressure for me to make that like a, a career choice or anything like that. It was more something for me and him to connect over and kind of do together, sort of dad and lad. The good stuff in my life wouldn't be as good if I didn't have my family and friends around to enjoy it with me. As much as being passionate about something is great, if you don't work hard at it, you'll never achieve what you want to achieve. I would have done half the stuff that I've done in my career so far if there wasn't a bit of hard work backing that up. Back in 2017, April 2017, I was at Donington Park in Formula 4. 17 years old, I think I was starting about sixth on the grid. I was coming up the hill at Donington Park after a corner called Old Hairpin. I was doing about 120, 125 mile an hour. As you're coming up a hill, it's a slightly blind crest. I had two cars side by side, so all I can see at this point, which you're so low to the ground, is literally the back end of these two cars. A car had spun off that was running up the front of the grid, but he was on right on the racing line, so where you would normally position your car. Last minute, they both dive out the way, and I'm, at that point, too close with not enough time to react. So I just hit this car. It all happens, obviously, so quick, but I had hit this car at 120 mile an hour. He's stationary. Everything kind of comes to a stop, and then, in terms of the actual crash itself, that's kind of how it happened. It was a big crash. Wasn't able to get out, and they put me into a induced coma. Separated the cars. Air, me and an air ambulance to the local hospital and then I woke up three days later-ish and I was double amputee. When I woke up, I was able to literally watch my accident back, realised, right, nothing I could do. It was out of my control, basically. It was one of those things, wrong place, wrong time. My doctors were amazing. The guy who did my surgery was a military doctor. He was like, you're probably going to struggle with a lot of things, but I've seen people in your situation work hard and they've gone on to do this. They can walk, they can run. It was just enough of a little like positive in there for me to be able to kind of grasp onto it and be like, yeah, okay, that well, we can we can still do stuff here. This isn't like life over or anything like that. Post accident, for me, the, the goal quite quickly shifted and it became getting back behind the wheel of a race car. At first, the FIA, who are like the governing body of the sport, were like, we want you to do F4 again if you go back into racing because you've become a double amputee, you've got a new system of driving, like you might be pushing the boundary maybe a little bit too much. But I was like, no, I'm gonna continue my career as I was on track to do before my accident. My accident hasn't changed me, my drive, my ambition. I wanna 
sort of push myself as far as I can go. Racing as a double amp petite has obviously changes with the, the way I drive, so I don't use my left leg in the car now. I brake with my right leg with a, a different prosthetic. I use my left hand, I paddle for throttle, I've got gears on my right hand and a hand clutch as well, so lots of new stuff to get used to. I spent about six months with my team, day in, day out, developing these, these systems so that I could compete against able-bodied drivers. My first race back, came third place, I got a podium on my return, which absolutely blew my mind. People like Lewis Hamilton and stuff messaging me saying, like, you smashed it, buddy, like, congratulations. That was such a rewarding feeling to have. What my accent kind of taught me is this, like, having a strong mental game and just believing in yourself and removing those, those boundaries from your mind, you can achieve so much more than you ever thought you were capable of achieving. Just keep pushing for a few more days, that extends to a few more weeks, a few more months, then all of a sudden you've done a year. I'm quite normal when it comes to stuff away from racing. Again, I'm a sporty person, so I like to get involved with sport and stuff like that. Like I say, I'm a gamer, so I'll play games with my mates. We'll go out just wherever, just have a bit, few like drinks and a bit of fun. Like I like to enjoy my time away from racing because racing is so intense and takes so much out of you. I don't like to take life too seriously, so anything where I can ha just be laughing, that's me down to a T. How I want people to remember me, people in my situation being amputees, I'm one of few in motorsport that can compete against able-bodied people with having a disability. It's not, not many sports where able-bodied can compete against disabled on a level playing field. I think my attitude has just shifted to never giving up and just always pushing myself. So if people could remember me, it would be about the guy who never gave up and never let people decide what he was capable of doing. I'm hopefully going to be the guy to pioneer that. And I, that is obviously the end goal for me is to, to be a Formula One driver and compete at the highest level of motorsport with a disability. I just want to open a pathway to people where they think that that could be possible because at the minute it's hard to think it's possible when it hasn't been done so hopefully I can uh, change that and uh, we might see a few more drivers come up through the ranks in a few more years time. For me challenging your boundaries is all about never giving up and it's only you that's holding back you. I think that that's the one thing I've learned is that I'm the only person that can stop me from getting to where I want to get to. If I have the right mindset and if I challenge my boundaries and push myself in the right way, then anything that's out there is achievable. I've challenged my boundaries because there was probably moments post-accident where I thought that would be me done in racing. Sometimes it's easy to have a bad few days and kind of think that that kind of thing is done and you won't be able to get there again, but each day is a new day to challenge yourself and to be better than you were yesterday. Thank you, that is some inspirational stuff. So let's have a recap. It's a 5G high performance processor to support all your speed needs, a 90 Hertz adaptive sync display for a smooth experience, and a triple rear camera for endless creativity. All day power with its elevated efficiency, the Redmi Note 10 5G is really something special. I get to give you the great news that as of today, you can go out and buy this phone. So it comes in a four gigabyte and 128 gigabyte model that retails for 209 pounds, or you can get it in the four gigabyte plus 64 gigabyte version for 199 pounds. Redmi Note 10 5G will be available to order online from me.com, Amazon, and other major UK retailers. And you can also purchase through our operator partners, 3 and Vodafone. Sales start today. If you order this within the first two weeks, you will be able to claim a free Mi Band 6. But don't go anywhere just yet because we've got another great phone to show you, the Redmi Note 10S. Okay, so here we have the Redmi Note 10S. And some of you may notice a very familiar design. It shares a lot of its design cues with its older brother, the Redmi Note 10 Pro. The first thing you notice when you pick it up is how light it is. So we've shaved off 15% of weight versus the previous generation. So it now weighs in at just a measly 179 grams. It sits perfectly in your hand because it's also slimmer than ever at 8.29 millimeters. It comes in three beautiful colors, onyx gray, pebble white, and a beautiful ocean blue. That's right, and that ocean blue color is exclusive to the Redmi Note 10S. 
So it comes in some very vibrant colors, um, complementing what is a very nice design. We know that our Mi fans have been requesting this for a very long time, so I'm very happy to announce that we now have an AMOLED display on the Redmi Note 10S. This means that you get more eye-popping colors as well as better contrast levels, and not just that, a 6.43 inch display makes sure that it's really immersive as well, so anything you watch will be a glory to see. Okay, and onto the camera setup. And for the Redmi Note 10S, we've really upped the ante. You've got a quad camera array. So the main camera is a massive 64 megapixel main camera, and that's great for just taking your day-to-day -day shots as well as recording video. You've then got a wide-angle lens that can go up to 118 degrees for when you want to get those epic landscape shots. You've got a macro camera for when you want to take those up-close, intricate, detailed shots. And finally, you've also got that depth sensor. We also have software features such as panorama, slow motion, time lapse, and one of my favorites, AI skyscaping to tune up your pictures. The Redmi Note 10S features the powerful MediaTek Helio G95, and the GPU performance is now tuned at 900 megahertz, and that is an increase of 31% versus the previous model. This means that you'll be able to enjoy your games in high resolution at silky smooth frame rates and scroll, swipe, stream, and snap without any worries. And when you are doing all of that stuff, you don't need to worry about running low on battery because the Redmi Note 10S packs a massive 5,000 milliamp battery, which will give you roughly two days of usage. And when you do run low on power, you can charge it up with a 33 watt fast charger, which we've included in the box. So to put the Redmi Note 10S and the rest of the Redmi Note series through its paces, we partnered with Red Bull for an extreme race across the Alps. Let's have a look. Okay, so now onto the all-important prices and availability. The Redmi Note 10S is available in 6GB plus 128GB for £229, but if you buy it in the first three days, you can get it for £199. Or you can get it in 6GB plus 64GB for £199, but again, if you order in the first three days, you'll get it for £179. The Redmi Note 10S is now available to order online at me.com or Amazon. And so that's it for today. Thank you all so much for watching and we really hope you love the phones as much as we do. Until next time.
Hello there guys, my name is Dennis, straight from Stun Camera Crew. Guess what? Xiaomi has challenged us to break the boundaries of time. So we decided to create three videos in three days. And we did it all by using this phone, the Redmi Note 10 Pro. Let's take a deep dive over to these parkour locations that you're probably not so familiar with. So I'm gonna press play here and let's see how we did it. The first day, ladies and gentlemen, we were at the green screen studio. Here we tested the power of this phone in a green screen environment. And you can actually do one of these green screen scenarios yourself. What you need is basically some green fabric, some lights to keep it even lit. You don't want that spill overcasting your subject, so you're gonna have problems in post. We've all been there, we don't like it, so let's not do it. Capture this in the highest quality possible you can. In our case, this was 4K, 30 frames per second. So we got the option to slow it down to 80%. And we chose to shoot with a high shutter speed to get less motion blur when shooting the talented tricker, Nico Dilfau. We had an artist create a 3D world environment that's based in the future. A grand hall entrance to Xiaomi headquarters. Now this space is huge, but it's made small by Nico's captivating movement. That's a wrap. Hope you find that useful. Let's move on. Day two, ladies and gentlemen. Here we're gonna take you guys over to the street. All right, some people are curious about how we shoot our videos in a one take sequence. Therefore, we got Oliver Thorpe, who is a parkour athlete who lives in Copenhagen, who basically has teamed up with us to demonstrate how to do this. All right, let's get on to it. Find a location as the first thing you do, then plan the run for your athlete, jumper or stunt related sport comrade. This will take you further in your thought process of how you want your cinematography line to look like. You can't really expect to get it the first time, even the athlete has to warm up in preparation for the final sequence. So take this as opportunity to warm yourself up and prepare yourself for the shot that you want to create. Amazingly, Xiaomi has created this feature on the phone that's called a track moving object which basically means that you can track your subject more effectively. This feature will enable you to get your shot in less time. Ladies and gentlemen, let's not stop here. Let me demonstrate what this phone can do in a more broader seamless sequence with more than just one athlete, the third and final shoot day at Jesse Peverell's gym. Let's get on to it. Hey, I'm Jesse Peverell. Welcome to Parkour Expo. Have you ever wondered what a parkour gym looks like after hours? 
Our team is hard at work changing this parkour gym into something otherworldly. We designed a film set that enables us to push the phone further so we can see how it performs in low light. Camera's rolling. And action. Now, there's a lot of movement taking place to this shoot as we're all exploring almost every inch of the space. It's good to become familiar with movement yourself, actually. With over 20 years experience of parkour ourselves, this has enabled us to develop like a sixth sense of a kind that we can bring to the action we film. Learning movement helps you better predict the direction of where the athlete is planning to go through. It's important here that the camera operator leads the audience in a sort of dance that you have choreographed. By doing so, it keeps the audience hooked in some constant suspense as they are being taken on a journey through the story that you are telling. Three videos in three days, breaking the boundaries of time, accomplished. We just want to give a big shout out to Xiaomi for giving us this opportunity to engage with our audience in this way. For everyone watching at home, we would love to see what you have applied to these techniques in your own creative way. Use the hashtags in the caption below to keep us, SEC and Xiaomi informed. We would love to see what you guys can create out there. So, trip, but don't fool, stay safe. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Dan Camera Crew signing out and thank you for stepping by. We can all relate to the moments that fly by. The repetitive routine that makes each day blend into one. Let's not forget though, there is in every day new terrain to discover. Places we live that we've never seen before. It's the pursuit of these things that makes time stop. Break from the boundaries you yourself construct. There's always greater things to discover around each corner or in my case, from this rooftop. I'm Oliver Thorpe, and Copenhagen is my place of timelessness. Hey, I'm Jesse Pebble. Welcome to Parkour Expo. Have you ever wondered what a parkour gym looks like after hours? Come on, let's check it out.